Hi folks and how are you? So today we're going to look at a little drawing on the iPad. This is the iPad Air and I'm drawing in Procreate. So no asking in the comments. <laughs> so we're drawing, this is uh, just a sketch and as you can see this has started off quite quickly. Uh, and obviously I've speeded things up a little, but yes. So today I'm just drawing from the imagination. And I do this quite a lot, and this is something maybe you should get into. Now, I use reference images quite a lot. One of the other things I do is I like to get out and draw uh, life drawing sessions when I can. This is very rare at the moment, obviously, due to commitments like the fact that I have a job, the fact that I have a family, the fact that there's a pandemic on. If you're watching this in the future, hopefully you're going, what pandemic? I don't see a pandemic. But life in general keeps you from going out to things like life drawing classes, unfortunately. So, unless you happen to have a life model stashed in your cupboard, and there aren't so many great reference photos online, Google Images is wonderful. But if you're like me, you just look a lot at the images and it's, it's kind of like, mm, yeah, great. A lot of them look a bit too staged, though. And you don't want to be drawing the same things that everybody else seems to draw. And wow. I mean, DeviantArt, I find, is great for poses. Google Images is great for things like portraits. You can just generally type in the specifics of things that you want. You know, somebody turns slightly to the side, somebody with a specific haircut. But you don't kind of get the lighting that you want, so on and so forth. One other thing that I like to do is I like to just go and sit out in public and speed draw people who are just walking past me, people who are sat about, and things like that. Now, if you're doing this on something like an iPad, then I suggest only doing this in a nice part of town. Otherwise, someone's going to walk up and take the iPad off of you. Can easily happen. That's why it's sometimes better to do that with just, you know, uh, a nice steadler or rotaring set of, um, you know, pencil and eraser and a nice sketch pad. But you can always, and I mean always, Grab your tablet, bit an iPad or something else, and draw from your imagination. And this is always an excellent process because you are going to be working your imagination. And you can draw whatever you want. It doesn't have to be a regular portrait like this. You can draw fantasy creatures, you can draw landscapes, you can draw robots, monsters, vehicles, whatever you'd like. But drawing a portrait from your imagination is a great test of your skill set. Because drawing something real, but drawing it from your imagination means that you know your technical skills are accurate. See, if you're drawing a, an anime character, you could only ever draw that from your imagination. But drawing something real and realistic from your imagination is different from drawing, say... Um, a fantasy orc from your imagination which is always going to be from your imagination even if you're drawing somebody else's uh, intellectual property say if I drew a games workshop orc which I might want to have a reference image for so I make sure it looks exactly like their IP see what I mean so just to look at this image for the moment it's not 100% accurate uh, in terms of anatomy, but um, it's getting there and I kind of like it. The one thing I like about this image so far is I like the eyes. They look kind of soulful. Now I know the nose is maybe a little too short and I know that's one of my downfalls as an artist is I, I tend to paint the noses to be a little too short. I know 
that is one of my problems. I also don't the little um, the dip on the nose where the nose is uh, nearest to the eyes. I don't push it far enough in, but that's just me, and I know they're my follies, and I know I need to correct them more often. But that's why we practice these things from imagination. So we know what we have to correct and we learn from our mistakes. Whereas if we're always drawing from reference images, we don't kind of learn in the same way. Which is why I think we have to do a mix of kind of all of these things, really. You know, if you only ever draw from imagination, you're not going to be the best artist. But if you only ever draw from reference photos, you're not going to be the best. If you only ever draw... You know, it's like somebody who only ever traces photographs and you know who you are. You you definitely know who you are. And when you post images and say you've drawn this yourself, I know you're lying. I've seen your work. And I, I know you post photos on Twitter and Facebook. And as soon as everybody else sees your work, we know you're lying. We can tell, other artists can see straight away that you've traced an image. We have kind of a sixth sense for knowing when an image has been traced. It's it's kind of creepy and spooky, but we can really tell, like straight away. It's like looking at a photograph that's had some kind of illustration filter that put over the top of it. And if you trace a photo... That is a cardinal sin. And you should have your uh, computer and drone tablet taken away from you. <laughs> I'm not going to sugarcoat that one. I'm sorry. Just the way we feel about it. And I said we, because I am talking about the wider creative community. We will find you. While you sleep at night and take away your tablet. <laughs> ah, dear. Um, obviously a joke. Don't worry. But, yes, so, <laughs> yeah, I lost myself with that one, didn't I? Okay, so, yeah, it is something important to draw from your imagination and to mix it up a little bit with drawing from reference images and to try different techniques. With this one, I wasn't sure where the image was going to go, and that's also kind of a nice treat. I just sat down and started drawing and I had no image in my head, which was a bit of a strange one. I know I knew it was going to be a woman. I knew it was going to be a more mature woman. Even when I started drawing the hair, I wasn't sure kind of what haircut it was going to be until I started putting the first few strokes down. But the eyes spoke to me so clearly after those first few marks that, you know, she kind of she kind of came together. And I think when I was about a quarter of the way into this video, I could see her really clearly. So from then on, I, I knew the finished image and I could see that. And it was just about carrying on and piecing it together. But... It depends on what kind of imagination you've got. Whether you're one of these people who can see a finished image in your mind and it's just about extracting that and putting that onto your canvas. Or if you're one of those people who you can't see clearly, if you don't have that defined image in your head. And I know there's a lot of those people out there. It's like some people don't have an eidetic eidetic. I can't say it today. Uh, so I won't try again. If you're one of those people who, who doesn't have um, an image-based memory, so you can't kind of, you know, visualize clearly what you want to uh, put down on your canvas. I mean, neither is right and neither is wrong it doesn't ultimately matter and I, I don't think people should be persecuted for for not being able to see a clear image no artistic um, means is is 
is right or wrong. But having a skill set that you build up over the years is what's going to carry you through to being able to create um, a good image, a good painting. Building up lots of little skills and teaching yourself lots of little tips and tricks will get you through. And that's what doing daily drawings is all about. That's what, you know, drawing from your imagination will help teach you. Drawing from reference images will teach you. Personally, doing all of this, you know, really does help me. Things like I'm doing right here by just fattening out her jawline, adding this extra bit of cheek on here that you can see me doing. I've drawn dozens and dozens and dozens, hundreds of hundreds of portraits. And I know that on mature people, um, that lower jawline being a bit thicker really, really does work, really looks better. Um, and is more accurate. And when I look at the other side of her face, you know, I, it's more built out on that side. And straight away, there you go. It really does look a lot better. I also know that the the softer side of the lower neck really does come through a lot more as well, depending on how much shirt lighting I put down there. And it, yeah, it just really works. I'm really happy with the lighting there and the fact that I added a, a kind of a, a brighter blue to one side. And you can just see subtle elements of that coming through in the face. But it really, uh, when it comes to lighting on a portrait like this, Drawing from your imagination, you can go as wild as you want. And I think when you're drawing reference images, people tend to stick mainly to the reference image. I see a lot of artists who get a reference image in front of them and they copy the reference image 100%. Which I always think is a little dull. Even when I draw from a reference image, I tend to m manipulate it and change it up a little bit and... Yeah, I tend to change it a lot, you know, just with what I have in my imagination. Which I think is perfectly natural. But a lot of other artists, like I say, stick to stick to the script, stick to the reference image. But it's up to you what you want to do. When you draw from your imagination, there is no script. You could go absolutely wild. Right now, I could give her horns. I could have smoke coming out of her nose, out of her mouth, out of her eyes. I could turn her into a demon. I could make her an angel. I could give her wings behind her. I could paint her silver, make her into a robot. I could make her a ninja. I could give her a red skin. Uh, I could turn her into a zombie, actually. That'd be quite easy by just taking big chunks of her skin away, um, put blood all over her face. I could give her, I could make her mouth open and give her vampire teeth. Um, I could give her big pointy ears and turn them into an elf, even though I'd have to probably remove the um, wrinkles. I don't know. I could do 101 things. I could turn them into a robot. But it depends what you really want to do and how wild you want to go with your imagination. As I said earlier, for me, part of it is to test out my technical skills. So, what I find exciting is just to make it as realistic and as accurate as possible so that I know that when I do my daily sketches, I'm making myself a better artist rather than trying to just go wild with my imagination by doing robots and vampires and zombies and other things. I know I'm actually trying to make myself a better artist. So when I do my commissions, when I'm actually 
doing a portrait for somebody. I know I can do a better job then when I come across a problem when I actually have a reference image in front of me and I just think, oh, I want to change that bit a little. I know I can transfer these skills across to that. I can blend the the thing from my reference image to my imagination. I think it just gives you more of a, fl- a free-flowing dynamic if you can use your imagination more and test it out that way. Now, don't get me wrong, I love to draw fantasy and science fiction. If you look at my portfolio on lawrencemann.co.uk, you will see I love drawing all kinds of creatures. But just drawing everyday people. And I have drawn my fair share of big-bosomed women over the years, especially when I was younger. But drawing, I think... People with, you know, everyday people, people with uh, a bit of maturity to their face, people who have crooked smiles, people who, who, who may have crow's feet, you know, people with not the best hairstyles, um, people who could be your auntie and uncle, people who could be members of your family. They're the most interesting people to draw and paint, you know. Maybe they're the people who are more likely to give you commissions as well. And they're the people whose faces are more likely to cause you problems when painting. Because let's face it, those those beautiful people, they're just a flat shade of colour. There's nothing really interesting when it comes to when it comes to painting their faces. It's just one easy flat tone. And there's no imagination really required when painting that. No, it's, yeah, that's really easy. But when you have to use your imagination and say, right, well, here's the edge of the mouth and what what lines come out of the edge of the mouth? And you have to use your imagination to say, well... The mouth kind of moves from this corner and it moves in this corner as well. So the mouth would move in this way. And Maybe one thing to do is put a little mirror on your desk. I have one right here on my desk. And I, you know, I look at my own face. Now, you can call that a reference if you'd like. And yeah, that kind of is a reference. But there's nothing wrong with that. Now, I painted this image when um just during my daily drawing time, during my daily drawing time, yeah, that's a little, but I I painted this, and I didn't have my mirror in front of me when I was doing that, but I think having my mirror there in front of me is great when I'm doing my commissions, most certainly, but it definitely helps to... uh, to have that with you sometimes. Now you can see we're into the final leg of this now. I've only got a few minutes to go and you can see it's really come through. Now, it has got some issues with it. I won't say that it hasn't, but it's a quick sketch. This video is around the 20 minute mark. Overall, the video took about 40 minutes. The illustration took about 40 minutes to complete. So it's not bad for a sketch. I normally take a whole lot longer to do um, a commissioned portrait. So for a sketch, this is pretty quick. Very quick, in fact. And for me, the thing that I like about this is the lines, the contours of the face, everything like that, it's accurate. The lighting works really well for me, especially on the face. But the eyes, the eyes are very soulful. They convey a story. There's something there. There is a soul. There is a life within that face, within those eyes. 
she almost feels like she's going to say something. She wants to say something. And remember, this isn't anybody. This this person does not exist. This isn't a representation of someone I know. There isn't a reference image. This isn't done from a photo. There is nobody. This is nobody. This is just me drawing a face. Anyway, I hope you liked it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And let me know what you think. Do you draw just from imagination? Does it help you improve as an artist? I'd love to know. Right, guys. I'll speak to you all later. Have a wonderful day.